everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Samantha Anderson. I am a freelance artist and teacher hoping to inspire creativity. If you would like more videos like these, please take a second to like and subscribe down below. It really helps in the algorithm of YouTube to help get my videos seen to more people. If you want to receive notifications of when I go live, please make sure to hit the bell and choose all notifications. If you have any questions during or after the class, make sure to pop a comment down below and I will answer Answer it as soon as I can. I'll be leaving timestamps down below so you can skip ahead to the start of class, but I will be sharing announcements as well as supplies, so make sure to stick around for that. If interested in learning more about my classes, please follow me on Facebook and Instagram, and feel free to check me out on Patreon where I teach exclusive classes to those who support me. In Patreon, I also give traceables for all of my live classes, including this one. Lastly, if you would like to share your work after class with me and others who painted along with us, please head over to Facebook as I have an artist community where you can share your finished painting with us. I'll leave links for all of that in the description box below. Thanks for joining me and let's get started. Hi everyone, welcome back to another class. I am excited to paint. We just got back from our a 10 day vacation road trip to Missouri. So it's good to be home. And I'm just grabbing my, um, my traceable here. I'm gonna link this down below just to make sure you all have it in case you would like it. Um, I will be using this for today. Um, as always, you don't have to use the traceable. Um, it's just there for anyone who wants to use it. Um, it's for my patrons. It's kind of a gift I give to them. So if you want it, it's linked below um, or in the description box. Either works. Let's see. Put it there. But yeah, let me know uh, where you're painting from, if you're painting with anybody. Hi, Cindy. Let's welcome in. Okay. To figure out how to. I usually do this beforehand, so we'll see. Is that where I want it? Is that in the middle? I can't tell. But how are you? How is everybody? I feel like it's been forever since I've talked to you, but it's been the same amount of time as other paint nights. It's just we were on a very long road trip. Um, my husband was a champ and drove the whole, the entire trip. So, but let's see, how's he doing? Um, let's see, flashlight. Do any of you do this before? Like shine it and uh, let's see, you have to see where it is. I'm just going to get the general shape of it and I can put in all the details later um, when I'm painting. But it is nice to have a general idea of where everything is. I'm trying to figure out if this is centered. It's okay if it's not centered, but I think that's probably the center that it's going to get. Roughly put this in. I will be going over like the basic shapes of this um, before we start, but um, for me, it's nice to have um, this on here beforehand. 
And just a reminder, like using a traceable or like drawing it on beforehand is not cheating. It's just another tool that we can use. Do, uh, having a traceable doesn't paint it for you. <laughs> That's what I like to say. Did your, uh, how did your kids like the snow? They loved, well, Lincoln loved it. Lincoln is our four year old, four and a half year old. He absolutely loved it. He spent more time outside than all of us combined. Um, he was like, he, he would have spent all day outside if we would have let him. Um, but yeah, he adored it. Um, my two year old, however, hated it <laughs> she did she was like happy for the first maybe like 10 minutes we were out there the first time and then she wanted to have nothing to do it with it like the rest of the trip we did make her go out at least one more before we um before we like packed up essentially but um which she was like she she was fine she didn't really want she didn't want to come back inside but she didn't want to go in the snow she was just like all of her answers were no um but she she did not like it as much as Lincoln. Let's just say that. Um, but I had fun with him. He like sledded, sledded. We sled. Is that the whatever? We had a lot of fun. Um, and yeah, good memories. Um, let's see. Sometimes I will draw on a piece of paper until I get it right, and then trace it onto my canvas. Yes, that is a that is a good way to do it. Sometimes it's easier if I when I'm drawing something out to go over it with a sharpie so I can like see it better through the can like through the canvas sometimes I think I need to make my um, lines thicker on my traceable just so it's easier to see but this one had a lot of detail so it's kind of hard to kind of hard to do, that, to do that yeah we had a good trip it was a lot of driving um, obviously we weren't we didn't drive straight to Colorado. We went to Missouri for a wedding and then on our way back. So theoretically, if we did that again, it would not be as much driving, which would be nice. Um, if we went to um, to Colorado, but okay. I'll take this off so I can see it a little bit better. How has everybody else been? Again, it feels like I've, it's been like forever since I talked to everyone, but it's been the same amount of time as any other trip. So I have the base of this in here. I really just did the outline and like the main lines that go down. Cause a lot of this is still just nature, um, like around it. So I, I'm not gonna be particular in like where that all is in. Um, Cause we're gonna do the, we're gonna do the background first. So I don't really wanna put in too much detail. Cause I'm just gonna cover it up. But for those of you who like to like put in all the details and then like paint around everything, traceable is really nice to have for that. I realized I missed a couple lines on this traceable. Not anything like big or anything, but. enough um, and if you have some tape 
um, feel free to get that out. It might be helpful to have some tape um, for the horizon line. Um, I'll probably be using that. You don't have to, but uh, when using horizon lines that are like really far off in the distance, sometimes it's helpful to have a um, some tape just to get a straight line, and then you can always you can always fix any imperfections um, after you take the tape off. Um, but yeah, so I will be using a some tape. I don't know if it's in. I mean, it's always in the description to like things to have on hand, um, but specifically. I will be using tape and I may or may not use a palette knife for some of the rocks but that is um, that is personal preference I'll teach I'll teach both ways um, but this is what mine looks like so far it's very, very faint. You can barely tell. Um, but I kind of left the bottom like undetailed and I really just put in the main. I didn't even really put in the, um, the windows because I'm going to have to go, I have to go over all of that with white anyways and it'll be easier just to put the windows in later. At least for me. If you want to mark where they go, that's fine. But yeah. I um while we were on our trip, I ended up um I ended up kind of taking oh uh, let's see. Uh what size is your canvas? Uh my my canvas is eleven by fourteen. All of the ones that I do um, for actually even the Patreon classes I've been doing, they've all been 11 by 14. Um, but you could honestly, you could do this on any size canvas. This would even look good on like a round canvas, um, or like an oval canvas that would look really pretty. Um, but yeah, um, any canvas is fine. I would just say to have a portrait, unless of course you wanted it to have like go to the side, then, then in that case I would have it landscape so you can have a little bit more room so that's up to you um what i was going to say is that on the trip um every time like the scenery changed like from either state to state or just like from a different like point of view i guess i took like a little snippet of a video and like, so I have this roll of video where it's like maybe five to seven seconds of just a different scenery. And I wanna put it all together and just be like all of the sceneries that we passed going across the states. It's just kind of a fun thing. Um, but there's some really pretty, um, some pretty sights just in driving. A lot of it is nothingness, don't get me wrong. <laughs> But like seeing all the different scenes um, back to back could be cool. Were any of you with me when I did the first uh, lighthouse? It was like really early on in my online classes. It was probably like the, I don't know, I want to say like sixth or seventh one that I did. Um, maybe maybe more like 10th because in the beginning I was doing them every week um but we did a we did a I think it was like a starry starry night um type of lighthouse and I had like this like the light rays and stuff like that and stars it was really pretty if you like lighthouses feel free to go paint that one too um that one should be on my Facebook um, when I was doing it on my Facebook. So that's like one of the only ones that is still on my Facebook because actually I could probably repost that one. Maybe. Let me know if you want me to repost that one because most of the ones on my Facebook I've taken off. Uh, first one I did with you was a cherry blossom tree. Okay. Yeah, that was the first one I did on YouTube. 
That was like when I switched over because I was getting a ton of spamming. So I switched over and that was the first one um, that I did. Maybe I'll do a reboot. Um, not a reboot, but I will download that and repost it. Um, and just say it was like an older one. Because that one's still on my Facebook. I like lighthouses too. That's why we're doing one. This one's so like chill. <laughs> um, I did the daisy with the teal in the background. That was I think that was the that was the second one I did after I started painting my own classes. Like I wasn't using anybody else's. I was using um, like the the pictures, like the royalty free pictures. And that would have been mid-October, because October was the first, oh no, it might have been November, but yeah, um, October of 2020, so like a year and a half ago. It's so crazy how long, it feels like I haven't been doing this for very long, but it's been, it's been two years now, because it's April. The daisy was fun. I definitely, I switched it up during class because like, that was, that's when I was like pre-painting them and because I had like, because I, I was not confident um, in like painting it for the first time in teaching. So I was like, I need to pre-paint this so I know what I'm doing. <laughs> I know what colors, but now I can just, I'm more trained in looking at a photo and like being like, okay, I know how to paint this. Um, but before, so I did one, and then when I did it during the second class, I was like, I don't really like how the first one came out, so I'm going to change it. And I definitely like this one better. But, yeah. Hi, Janie. I missed that. Good evening. Good evening. I think here it's technically still good afternoon. When does evening start? I always thought evening started like at six. Like five or six is evening. Afternoon is like, I mean afternoon is afternoon. But mid afternoon is like three. So it's like 3.50 right now. So are we like, Late afternoon? <laughs> when does evening start? <laughs> um, Cindy says, I've been painting for almost two years by watching tutorials. Now I'm trying to come up with my own, but it's hard. It is hard. Yeah. Um, I think it definitely does get easier. Um, but I think I've enjoyed so much, like looking at references in painting that I haven't really tried too much to paint on my own. Um, I will say that the cherry blossom one was one that I came up with, um, like out of my head. Um, and that one was really popular, so maybe I should do that more often. Or maybe it was just because it was a cherry blossom and it was pretty. Pretty pinks. People like pink. Um, but um, it's almost six here, six fifty. Yeah, so you're you're well into evening. I feel like. Um, hi, Allison. Yeah, um, I would say. I would say six is evening. Maybe five thirty. <laughs> what are the other ones that I've done? like just me I would say I have I know that I have two on patreon one was like my first snowy mountain one I drew inspiration from like Bob Ross stuff but I had this idea of what I wanted to do and, and then I ended up doing that um, but then the other the other one was a it was also early on um, 
what's the tree called? The one that's like a weeping willow. That's the one. I did a weeping willow. And I actually, in a quick tip, in my Patreon, I talked about how to like come up with your own like material. Um, and a lot of it is like looking up references, especially when it comes to nature. Like you don't have to copy the reference perfectly, but having a few different references so you know like how in real life things are uh, is really helpful. Um, uh, it's almost six here too, Allison. Uh, hi, been excited about this lighthouse. Love them. I love them too. I'm excited too. Hi, Donna. Watching from West Central Indiana. Every time I hear Indiana, the song from the Music Man. Getty Indiana, Getty Indiana. That song pops in my head every single time I hear Indiana. I can't, I can't unhear it. Um, for those of you who don't know, I was, um, I was a theater major in college and I did theater before that. And I was marrying the librarian for one of our, um, plays or musicals of the music man. So that's, it's just like, dug into my head. So every time I see Indiana, it just plays in my head. Uh, Pittsburgh, Kansas. I feel like most of the people who paint with me are on like the East Coast. Like middle to East Coast. I've tried to paint roses but can't seem to get them to look right. I have a, let's see, did I put it up? Where is it? Right here. I have this one on my YouTube. So that one's free. I also have another one in my Patreon, um, but it's a little bit of a different style. It's not as realistic, um, but it uses the same technique. So if you feel free to go um, watch that one. Um, it's, it's tedious to get them to look realistic because there's so many different colors and shading of those colors in a rose that makes it really difficult to make them look realistic um but I thought I don't know I was able to get it to look the way I wanted it to if that makes sense um but feel free to go watch that class if you haven't already Does anybody have any questions before we get started? Obviously I have the, um, I have the traceable listed. I think most of who's commenting right now are patrons, so obviously you have, you have the, um, traceable. Okay, great. Um, I guess I should probably get my paints out. <laughs> I haven't done that yet been chatting with you guys it's interesting because we have less people in this live class than I think I've ever had in a live class with the exception of like the first couple that I did and yet there are more comments and more chatty people in this chat than like most of my other ones I appreciate it um what is the best opaque black um, I use Mars Black and then, let's see, what do I have here? I think this is, this is Mars Black. I use Mars Black. Um, it, there's different hues to the different blacks I've noticed. Um, off the top of my head, I couldn't tell you which ones are which. Um, but some have more of like a brownish tint to them. Um, so I usually do Mars Black because I feel like it has more of a cooler tone, which in turn, like, registers with me more black rather than the warmer tone, which is more of that, like, brownie color. Um, so I like Mars Black, but everybody has their own opinions and are entitled to that. But you did ask a question. So I would say Mars Black, but I think there's 
definitely different uses for other blacks. But, um, let's see. I don't even know what colors I told you guys to get out. I always do that. I'm just like, what colors am I getting? <laughs> I had this whole time to get these colors out, and I'm waiting until the last two minutes. It's because you guys have been talking to me, and I've been distracted. Which is fantastic, and I love it. Thank you for talking to me. Uh, okay, I said titanium white, black, raw umber, I think I might use my burnt umber. I still haven't refilled my my raw umber, so I'm just going to use my the brown that I have, which use the brown that you have, and I have burnt umber. I can always make it darker with black. Red, yellow, phthalo blue, and actually I think I might change that to ultramarine blue. No, it's kind of got greens in it. Never mind. I'll stick by what I did. Um, a phthalo blue and yellow and red. All right, primary colors, pretty much. Primary colors: red, yellow, blue, um, burnt umber, black, and white. And then, yeah, I have a 11 by 14, which is from Fredericks because. They were really kind and gifted me like four boxes of them. So I'm going to be using that today. But let me get this all set up and uh, see you on the other side. Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Samantha Anderson. I am a freelance artist and teacher hoping to inspire creativity. If you would like more videos like these, please take a second to like and subscribe down below. It really helps in the algorithm of YouTube to help get my videos seen to more people. If you want to receive notifications of when I go live, please make sure to hit the bell and choose all notifications. If you have any questions during or after the class, make sure to pop a comment down below and I will answer it as soon as I can. I'll be leaving timestamps down below so you can skip ahead to the start of class, but I will be sharing announcements as well as supplies, so make sure to stick around for that. If interested in learning more about my classes, please follow me on Facebook and Instagram, and feel free to check me out on Patreon where I teach exclusive classes to those who support me. In Patreon, I also give traceables for all of my live classes, including this one. Lastly, if you would like to share your work after class with me and others who painted along with us, please head over to Facebook as I have an artist community where you can share your finished painting with us. I'll leave links for all of that in the description box below. Thanks for joining me and let's get started. Hi everyone and welcome back to another live class. I'm excited to paint this lovely classic lighthouse on this gloomy day um and yeah i'm excited if you guys have any questions make sure to leave them in the in the uh chat box below and i will answer them when i can let's go over some supplies real fast um and then we will get started uh, let's see so today i am using a 11 by 14 uh fredericks canvas they were really kind um, about a month ago and sent me like four boxes of these to try out um, and I love them. They're way tighter than anything I would get from Hobby Lobby or Michaels um, and they're really like sturdy so I've been enjoying using them. Um, but yeah, they gifted those to me so uh, thanks. Thanks Fredericks. Um, for my... Uh, for my paints, I will be using mostly Hippie Crafter acrylics. Uh, those who have been following me know that they gifted me these as well. Um, I love them as well. Um, but any full body acrylics will work the same. I have, today I'm going to be using my, oh, and then I have um, my Liquitex white because obviously these are small bottles, small-ish bottles, and I've been painting them with them for a while, so I ran out. So I have my um, my white, my black, and then I have my brown. In the description box, I said raw umber, but I'm going to be using uh, burnt umber. You can use either. 
uh, I'll just be darkening mine up with some black. It's mostly just for um, to kind of gray out and brown out, dull out some of the colors. So really any brown should do. And then for the colors, for all of the colors, I will have my essentially primary colors. Um, so I have my, this is scarlet, but just a primary red, yellow, medium yellow, and then I will have my phthalo blue. I thought about doing an ultramarine blue with this, but as you can see with just the overall hue of this painting, it kind of has that like green hint to it. So um, typically when you add blue and brown, specifically phthalo blue, you get like this really dark teal. So that's kind of what we're gonna be going based off of. Um, so yeah, so your primary colors, the blue being phthalo blue. If you don't have phthalo blue, you could either add a tiny bit of green to your ultramarine blue or just use what you have. Use ultramarine blue. That's probably fine too. Um, and then your, your brown, your black, and your white. Um, for our brushes, I have the kit, the $15, $20 kit that I've been using for a few years. Um, it's super affordable. You get an array of brushes. I have that linked below. Um, but I will be pulling from that. It just has a ton of different brushes. Um, and that's what I will be using. Um, if you don't have a large filbert, which is usually what I like to use for the background, just any large, um, flat brush or, uh, just larger brush will do fine. If you're interested in the traceable that I've already put on my canvas, I will be going over basic shapes, but if you would like to, uh, if you would like to use the traceable, I have that in my Patreon, uh, which you can find linked below. And if you don't want to use it, that's totally fine. I will be going over basic shapes. Other things that you might want to use are a palette knife. I use this one almost every class. I have that linked below as well. Um, I use it to mix my paint. If you don't have a palette knife and a, like a flat palette to mix your paints, I would suggest using the smallest brush that you have, maybe like a one or a two, to mix it so you're not wasting paint in your brush. Um, and then obviously I have my palette, like I said before, my uh, paper towel, and then my water is off the camera. Um, but yeah, actually it didn't actually set this up. Let me just uh, mix this. Okay. Um, I think that is all of these supplies. Do you guys have any questions before we get started? Because if not, we will start mixing paint and we'll get going. Let me know if you have any questions. Um, while I'm waiting for questions, if you do have them, uh, let's go ahead and get out our paint. I think we're ready to get started. Are we ready to get started? Did I go through everything? Yes. Okay. Oh, uh, the, wait, the last thing that I will probably use is a, um, piece of tape for the, for the horizon. And this isn't necessarily to get a clean, a clean, crisp line because it is a little bit faded. It's a little bit, um, just kind of blurred out in the back. It's more just to be able to get an easy straight line and we'll blur it out. So if you have troubles with getting straight lines, it's just easy. Um, you just tape, done. Um, so have that on hand that we will be using. I will be using that um, for an easy fix. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, we will be starting with the background. So most of the background is gonna be the same color. It's gonna be in the blues and the grays. Um, and so we're just going to mix one color for the entire background and just use that sparingly with our whites and then more concentrated darks in the water. So we will, let's see, um, okay, first things first, let's go ahead and draw on our 
uh, lighthouse in case some of you don't have it. You're going to want to figure out where you want it. If you have it portrait like mine, I would suggest just try to get it as center as possible. If you don't think you can get it center and you know that's going to bug you, then put it off to the side so it's like intentionally off to the side. Um, or you can flip it uh, you can flip it to the side and do a landscape and have it off to the side a little bit so you have like more space um, but that's up to you what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab um, a little bit of white and this is for people who uh, would like to draw it on who don't um, don't have the traceable. I'm going to get out white and blue and then I'm going to get just a either a liner brush or just a general uh, round brush. I think I have like a three here, two or three. I'm going to get some water, mix in some of my white and a touch of blue. See how much that <laughs> that made it blue. Um, and I'm going to do a fairly light blue here because I want to be able to cover it up fairly quickly or fairly easily. Um, so whenever I'm going over it with my white or my blue, I want to be able to cover it up. If I use black or, or dark blue, it's going to be a lot harder to cover up. Um, so just keep that in mind. And my blue, I'm going to make my blue just a tinsy bit darker than I normally would so that you can see on the camera it doesn't have to be this dark. And actually I might have to make it a little bit darker. I don't know if you'll be able to see this. So essentially once you find the middle, where wherever your middle is going to be, you're just going to go straight down and that's going to be your middle. Okay, so you're going to do your middle. And then from there, you can do a T where you want your the start of the base to be. And notice that I'm using for these long straight lines, I'm using my wrists. I'm kind of connecting my wrists and setting my hand on my, um, my easel to give me some stability so I can hold the paintbrush really far away and get this long clean line otherwise I'm like trying to figure out what I'm doing <laughs> um, I've been ready since noon time zones are all messed up just <laughs> oh goodness oh when we were traveling a bunch of our time zones kept getting like pushed back and then moved forward and it was kind of crazy when traveling. Okay, so once you get your T, you're going to take your T and go all the way down and just go as straight as you can. Notice that I'm doing, you can either do one long line if you're confident in that, or you can do a bunch of little lines to get it straight across or to get it straight. And if it's, if it's not going on very well, try to have a little bit more water in your consistency your paint consistency or maybe um, you just need more. I think I'm actually gonna change the shape of mine and make it a little bit wider. Wider. I don't think my, I think my traceable might be a little bit on the skinnier side. I don't, I'm not sure how that happened. Cause I don't, um, I don't mess with the shape of it that way. That's good. It's kind of hard to tell if it's in the middle, but middle, middle enough. Okay, so once you have that base, you're going to go straight up, go a little bit in from your T, and you're just going to go straight up. and then leave a little bit at the top. And I can tell that when I drew this in, cause I was just looking at it, it wasn't, it wasn't centered. And 
there's a little like there's a little house on top of the house okay and that's pretty much it there's a little bit of a lip right here you can that comes outside of the top that you can do and then it comes in but that's the basic shape and that's really all we're going to do for right now because everything else is um, everything else is put in later just kind of fixing this here there we go all right all right so that's the basic shape we are going to put in the um, where we want our horizon just so we get an idea of where like where we have to go over and it's in this general area I want to say it doesn't have to be a perfect line because this is just like essentially this is just the threshold that we'll need to do like as we're coming down um, with our with our paint okay um, let's see I think that's pretty much it I'm gonna rinse out this brush because I won't need it for a while put it aside I'm going to grab some since I already have my white and my blue I'm going to grab some brown I'm going to grab my black I'll probably need more white so I'm just going to put more white on my canvas or on my sorry my palette Okay, so right now, because the clouds are like the same color as the, um, as the ocean, we are just going to make the color of the ocean and then we'll use that color for the clouds and for like that kind of gloomy, misty effect. Um, again, if you don't have a palette knife to mix with, just grab your small brush. We are going to grab some white to start off with a touch of blue probably equal parts brown and I'm just gonna mix that together and see where we come up with see what it makes because we're using this for like the almost the entire canvas there's a very large portion of the canvas that we're using this we will need to have a good amount of it so it's a lot easier to have too much unfortunately too much than it is not enough because then you'll have to remix it and that's really hard when you're mixing a whole bunch of different colors together to create one color it's really hard to redo that um, especially if you're not used to mixing colors um, so I would say to try to make try to overmix on this part um, so you don't have to remix it. I'm going to grab more of all of these colors and a little bit of black. I think I'll need more blue. Yeah, because we're getting into a little bit too much of a brown color, but I do want to have a good amount of this. So essentially the white and the black serve as a gray and then the blue, the brown creates to like creates a dullness to the blue and like cuts the color so that it's not as bright. And this color is pretty close.
So if you have any questions about mixing these, this color, please comment below. I guess it might be to the side to some. <laughs> comment. Just comment. Let me know. Um, I think I pretty much have equal parts black and brown and then I would say like for people who like this if there's ten parts to this maybe four parts white three parts blue and then three parts equally like one and a half like black and brown I'd say this probably is close to it so just kind of play with the color I can't tell if this is gonna be enough uh, the the top part of it um, yeah I mean that's pretty much what I have it's a it's a very like like it's gray it's like a blue gray I would say like unintentionally rhyming. <laughs> um, yeah. I think, let's see. I feel like it looks a tad bit more blue in my palette camera than it is in real life, but it's pretty darn close. Um, if you have turquoise, turquoise green brownish, like it's more turquoise green brown than this color, because in that case I would say you need more gray, which would be your black and your white. Turquoise, <laughs> turquoisey, greeny, brownish. Because you have to think, if if it's too turquoisey, brownish, which are your green, you know, like green and your, sorry, your blue and your brown, and it's too much of that color, then you have to add the other colors to counteract um, what that is, which would be your white and your black but yeah mine was too mine was too brown um should it look more grayish um it's essentially a dark gray with a teal like a hint of teal which would be your brown and your phthalo blue so you could very well just mix a gray and then add your um add your brown and your blue, but I just did it all at the same time. Um, it's, it is gray. It's a type of gray, but it's more, it does have a teal element to it. I think this is the one thing that I miss about in-person classes is mixing colors. Because I could walk around the table and when people were mixing colors, it's like, okay, you need more blue. Okay, you need more black. You need more white or whatever. And I could, like, give that personal instruction. And when we're like this, I can't, I can't give that personal instruction. I can only guess as to what you need based off of what you're saying. But yeah, I would say it's, it's a medium to dark gray with a hint of teal which would be your brown and your mixing colors is difficult especially when you're not used to doing it obviously like un... it's just one of those things where you just got to keep mixing until um until you're happy with it and know that also it doesn't have to look exactly like the picture like you can choose to like a different color than what is in the picture so like if I wanted mine to be more blue or you wanted like or you wanted to do an all gray painting, that's fine too. But this is the color 
that I have. I feel like it's fairly close. Not totally sure if I have enough of it, but I think I do because most of the um, most of the top is going to be like our white, our whitish and gray, um, which I'm going to mix real fast. I have my white, and then I'm going to mix whatever's on my palette knife, which is just a tiny bit of this um, teal color that uh, the teal gray, um, and I'm going to mix a little bit of black. It's probably too much black. Oh uh, no, it looks like it's fine. And I'm sorry if you can't tell the difference. The color that I'm mixing is legitimately the same color as my palette, <laughs> which happens very rarely. I don't mix gray very often. So we just have a little bit of gray that we can use. I'm gonna grab more, um, more white. If you do have troubles mixing color and like you look at a color and you're like not sure whether it needs to be warmer or cooler or how to mix, I do have a class in Patreon. It's available to, uh, I believe it's available to magenta and above. We did a mixing class early on um, and I went over how to mix your different paints and um, just using, I think just using these colors with the exception of the brown is raw umber and the blue is ultramarine. Um, but it gives you an idea of like when something doesn't look right, how to adjust it so you get the outcome you want. Um, so if you are interested in that, I can leave a link in um, the artist community or in Discord, depending on um, who's asked, who wants access to that. Um, but I do have that in Patreon if you're interested in a, it, like the whole class is for mixing. Because um, I know a lot of people have troubles with that. Okay. Um, the next time I have some time, I'll, I'll go search for it and I'll put a link down. And I'll put it in the description below, probably after the class. Um, and I, I'll probably link it in the... Um... Allison, are you a part of the artist community on Facebook? If not, everyone here should be. Because um, that's where you can post your... Um, that's where you can post your paintings. Okay. So for everyone who's not, here's the link to that. Um, I post their classes and everything. Um, and you can see, you can see all the Patreon classes before you become a patron, uh, before you become a patron. Um, so that's really helpful. But anyways, does anybody have any other questions for the paint? Are we good on the paint? Should we get started on the background now? But yeah, I will link that in um, that artist community and in the description below if you're watching this later. Um, yeah, yeah, Mike, if you can, if you want to find the class, um, it's just, just look up color mixing. It should be there. Okay, let's go ahead and start um the background so I have my gray and I'm gonna be using a lot of white so we're just going to I think I might make a little bit more gray though I feel like I don't have enough gray let me just quickly create this gray more um okay so I have this gray Wipe off my palette knife. Woo. Okay. I'm going to start mostly with the, um, the, the grays and a little bit of the whites in there. Um, but once we get the paint on there, then we can start adding in those darker colors and it will mix into the paint that we're already creating. 
Um, so let's go ahead and get our, I'm going to dip my brush. I'm going to be using my, um, my large filbert. If you don't have a large filbert, you can grab just any flat brush that you want. And before I get going, I'm going to paint the top of this because I always, I always forget. I don't want to say always, but a good amount of time I will forget either the top or like a corner of some sort. And I'm just like, why? Because then later I have to go in and paint it. I can't leave it unpainted. It would just bug me. Please tell me I'm not alone <laughs> in that. Okay, so I'm going to grab more of this gray. Move this. moved the cord to my mic so I was just making sure it was still hooked up. Alright, so I'm going to grab the gray and I can come in here and add some blues in here or you can wait um, until we get all of our gray on here. So you're going to go back and forth between your white, your gray, and that kind of gray blue going back into my my water a little bit back into my gray gonna add some of this blue here and it blends in so nicely once you get all of that in here back into my I'm gonna do a lot more white down here at the bottom like my white and my gray go in with a little bit more of your blue and blend it in and you can even like move it around so it looks a little bit more like clouds and then just gently go over it to smooth it out go right here with some white because there's almost like a line of white right here This blue color, mix it in.
one a little bit more gray, maybe a little bit more blue right here. And for the for the lighthouse, I'm not necessarily like avoiding every line of it. I do want to make sure that I go in a little bit, especially like where the windows are. You do want to go over that a little bit just so that it's cohesive. But I am kind of putting some lines And now I'm going to get more of my white. That's obviously mixing in with what's already on my... That's, it's mixing with, it is mixing with what is on my, um, my brush. And I want this to be cohesive, so I'm going to go all the way across. What I found for, uh, Mike, did you mean to put a link down there? All right, so that is, that's pretty much all you really need to do um, for the background. Um, and you could leave it like that. You could even, you could add in more, um, more clouds if you wanted to. Um, what I'm going to do right now is, uh, let's see. Here's what I found for color mixing. I did, you did me too, or you did put it in. I don't see a link. Um, okay, so I'm just going to put this here just so that I can get a straight across. Let's see. Make sure that this is straight. Sometimes it's hard to tell. Okay. Ah! I think I need a longer piece because I know that it's still a little bit um, wet, but we kind of want it wet. Whoa, that was loud. We kind of want it wet. So I'm just going to... I need to look at this straight on. I think because the camera is like slightly crooked, sometimes it's hard to tell if it's straight. Okay. So now I'm just gonna take some of this gray and this blue. And put in just the gist of a line. And now you can see 
now I have like I know that I have a straight line so it's literally I'm not I'm not really even painting over it I'm painting over it enough to know that it's a straight line and then here I can take some water and on the lighter side And I can start blending out the top part here. So I just got the same color that I was using for the, um, like right here. And I'm just going to blend that top part real fast before it dries just so that it's a little bit fuzzy And I'm going to do the same thing over here. I'm going to put in some of this dark color. Go into my gray, blend that up. get some of my white and just blend this a little bit Alright, so now I'm going to go into my blue and just fill up the rest of this area, starting mostly at the bottom. And when I say the bottom, I mean like down here. Um, and I'm just going to gently blend it into this top part. Don't go up too far because you don't want to ruin that like nice faded area. Here I'm going to go this whole area down here. Again, I'm just going to work my way up. I 
add just a tiny bit of water. And I'm just going to try to blend this in without going too far up. And I think I might need a little bit of this gray to help blend it in. I'm going to rinse out my brush. I think I'm going to try and just blend this a little bit more. Alright, I think I like that. Um, so what I did there is I just, I'd rinsed out my brush and kept a little bit of the water in it. Um, and grabbed some of the color that was right here, just above the water, and helped just kind of blend that just a little bit. Um, and this portion here won't be seeable. So, because that's, yeah, okay, I think, didn't get to set up in time however I will be painting this beautiful lighthouse awesome yep it stays up so feel free to paint it later um, all right so now just to have a little bit of diversity in the waves um, I'm going to add just the slightest bit of black to some of this blue maybe a tiny bit of brown just to darken it up ever so slightly Darken up just a little bit. And I'm just going to put in some like waves. And the waves just include lines. That's really all I'm doing. I'm just putting in some lines. So I put in a few lines and then I'm just, I put in a few lines uh, with my brush perpendicular or like um, flat across this way and then I'm going to turn it sideways and blend it in a little bit.
right, and there is a little boat over here if you want to add that later. I'm not going to add that one. Um, but if you wanted to add it later, you could. Okay, so that's pretty much the water and the background. That's it. Um, so the rest of this is going to be really just uh, lighthouse and rocks. Um, let's go ahead and put in a layer of white on our um, on our lighthouse and then we will do our rocks so I'm gonna get out some more white and just do just a flat layer of white and I'm going to use a small flat brush for this or an angled brush whichever I find first um, the reason I'm using a flat brush instead of my usual trusty <laughs> filbert brush is because um, these all have like flat square shapes and straight and it'll be easier uh, to get that done with a flat brush so I just have a small um, flat brush that I will be using for this I'm gonna get it wet just a little bit and I'm going to just go ahead and start putting in my lighthouse. And when you are doing this, you want to avoid what I just did. Um, don't cover up this blue, this blue sky we have right here. Because um, that's going to be the sky that we see through the lighthouse. So you will want to, when we're doing this, you'll want to um, put in at least that portion of it. And what I'm doing is I'm doing my two sides first. Like that. And then I can go in and do split up the two middles. I'm just using a flat brush to cover this all in. Put in the things that you know. Uh, so someone asked, uh, Tanya asked, what advice would you have, uh, would you offer if you can't see your lines very good? If you can't see your lines very well, um, so for instance, I couldn't see anything in here very well. I started with the outside, what I know was there. Um, start with what you can see and then go based off of that to put in your other lines. For instance, I can't see this section I'm not just going to go blindly and put those sections in. I'm going to do what I know is there, for instance, these lines, the straight lines, and all of that. And then as I build up the rest of it, um, the things that I can see, um, it will be clearer where everything else goes. So 
So I'm just going to go all the way down with this white. And remember that this is just the first coat of this white. We're just kind of putting it in and covering up the lines. Um, Alright, so I know, I can see that this is one of the lines. So I'm just going to put that in. Put my diagonals in. So I am going to do this straight on so I can get these lines straight or else it'll look crooked. All right, so right here, I can see that I have everything up top here pretty well done, and I need to do the bottom. I know that the the thickness, the size of this top part is skinnier than the size of the bottom. So if I start at where the bottom is and go all the way down, I know that that's it needs to go out a little further. So I can use that to my advantage. And follow the same line, but make it a little bit wider. And I'm okay with adjusting it that way. And I'll give you a little secret. This right here is really awkward for me to do this side because I can't see on the other side of my hand. So what I'm going to do is turn it to the side so that I can see, <laughs> I can see what I'm doing. So here's the original line. But I can see that that is too, it's not far enough out. So I'm going to do it again but with one step further. Following the same line. And I can just pull this in.
and then just make sure to cover up this blue any blue that you came in and cover up this blue line All right. Um, let's see. That's pretty much um, all I am going to do for the first uh, for the first part of this. Um, let's see. Have you added gray to the wait? Have you added gray to the white in the lighthouse? Uh, no, it was just pure white. I haven't added any gray yet. Um, I will add gray on the next coat. Um, but first we had to get that first coat in, um, for this so that this can dry. We have kind of like a white canvas clean slate to work with. Um, and then we're going to be putting in all of the details on the next round. Um, for this bottom here, um, let's go ahead and put in our rock. Most of it is a pretty dark color, but we do want a little bit of lightness so that we can put in our darks. Um, so let's go ahead and make that color real fast. I'm going to be using my black and my brown. And let's go ahead and put in a tiny bit of this gray blue, if you have any left. So it'll make a fairly dark, uh, like brownish gray, probably close to like a, a, that black that we were talking about. Somebody commented earlier about what color it was, ivory black. So you have, if you have an ivory black, then you can just maybe add a little bit of brown to it and then you're good. Okay, I'm going to put in this dark color. It's going to look black on the screen, I promise you it's not. I can even add a little bit of white to it. Um, it is a very dark color, but once we start putting the black on it, you'll be able to see the difference. I'm just going to fill up this area. And there are stairs right here, but don't worry about the stairs right now. We'll put the stairs in in a little bit. And over on the left side, I went a little bit too far in. This is supposed to be still white. So I'm just going to wipe that away with some water and a clean brush. Don't worry, I'll come back and kind of fix that area. Um, but what I was going to say is that on the right side, there are some rocks that kind of go behind, um, 
it, so don't forget to add that. I'm going to just wipe some of this off so I can redo this area. Uh, black, brown, and gray. Yes. Sorry, I missed that question. Uh, what was the mix mixing instruction? Yeah, the the color here is your brown and your black. And then I put a little bit of this blue-gray that I still had left over. I'm going to put a little bit of rocks behind. And these rocks don't have to be um, very detailed right now because we still have another coat of white to put on. But You can just make them not flat, essentially. to get the side. And then need not forget the bottom. So there's that. Um, all right. So let's see. Let's go ahead and I guess we'll just start um, from bottom or top to bottom for this lighthouse um, I'm going to get a small round brush and do the detail at the top um, one thing to note is that the subtle differences in the um, colors of the lighthouse um, are what give it its shape. So pay attention to the different shades of each of the different parts and that what that's what gives it its shape. So for instance, like each one of these panels is a different color. It may be very subtle, 
but they are different colors. And part of copying a photograph like this is, um, as an artist, is knowing that even though we know that the lighthouse is white, the whole lighthouse is white, it's a white lighthouse. When we're painting it, because we have to look at it and paint each shade of that color of white, we can't look at it as, oh, it's just all white because then it would be very flat. It won't have any contrast to it. It won't have any like lighting effects things. Um, so even though it's a white uh, lighthouse, when we're painting it, it yes, it's white, but it has very uh, has a lot of different colors within its white. Um, so let's go ahead and do the top part. I'm just going to do a like a maybe a like a grayish brown. So white, black, and like a touch of brown is going to be this top part. And the left side is lighter than the right side. So as I move over to the right side, I'm going to get a little bit more black. And blend that over just a little bit. It's subtle, but it's there. Then I'm going to take my black and I'm going to put that little like top piece. I'm just going to go up. And then create a line and then put a roof on it. And the roof is going to be the same color as I just did, so it's going to be that kind of grayish color. Tiny little details. Maybe even give a little bit of a shadow here. Okay. Um, now, so the white that we're going to use for the lighthouse itself has it's a little bit of an off-white so I'm gonna go ahead and create that it's going to be um, white with a touch of brown and a touch of yellow so go ahead and get out just a very small dollop of yellow I'm going to do a touch of brown and a touch of yellow I'm just going to mix this together Start with just the slightest bit. You can always add more color. Because if it's too dark, then you'll have to add more white, and then you'll end up with a whole bunch of color. <laughs> um, so that is pretty, it's pretty good. I think I'm gonna add a little bit more white. So 
So this is kind of the base that we're going to be using for our, our lighthouse. Now, if you wanted it just to be pure white, that's totally fine. You can just put plain white on it and then just change your colors based off of that and have that be your base. But I like to challenge myself and really look at what colors are actually on um, the canvas. So that is what we're doing. Um, so I'm looking at this photo and it has a little bit of a lip, um, essentially where you're walking or where one would walk. And let me just, this bigger so you can see it. Okay. Um, and I'm just, I'm going to change now to a flat brush again because it's just easier for me um i'm going to i'm gonna i'm gonna still start from the top down there is a little bit of a lip on this side and i'm just going to start putting in all these little details. I'm going to color all of these sections this kind of off-white color and as I go through I can start adding my uh, my shadows. So for instance here I have a shadow underneath this little lip right here. So I'm going to take my black off to the side and add this white to it. And I'm going to add that I'm just noticed this is gonna bug me. It looks like the top of mine is crooked. <laughs> it's I let me fix it real fast. Sometimes it's hard painting off to the side because I can't always see if something is crooked or not. But let me see if I can fix it. I'm kind of a stickler when it comes to like symmetri like symmetrical things. Like if it's supposed to be symmetrical, it needs to be symmetrical. <laughs> Which is probably why I don't do buildings very often. Because I think it would bug me too much to have things not like correctly lined up. That makes sense. I can't tell if it's just because the thing is. Okay, let me re put in my shadow line. So if it's crooked, what I did, and it's still a tad bit crooked, but I'm gonna I'm gonna fix it. Um, let's say it's crooked like this, which is how mine's crooked. What you're going to do is I made the top of the right side thicker and the bottom of the left side thicker. So then it evens it out and makes the whole thing thicker, but it makes it less crooked looking. So I'm just going to... put in the line where it should be. I 
Um, I've only been using the, um, the off-white color. And then like a tad bit of this um, darker color. You can always come back later and put in the darker colors. Sometimes it's just helpful to put them in when you're thinking about it. <laughs> Um, at this point, I think I can start changing up the colors. Not that much though. So adding just a tiny bit of gray to to one of the sides. at least while I'm going here. Start putting in those subtle, subtle differences. Um, now I'm gonna do this here. There's a slightly black line that's right at the top here. Go ahead and put that in, and I'm just barely putting this on. Um, I'm just kind of dabbing it as I go across, and that's creating a line. If that's helpful, back into my main color Make that go all the way across so weird when I look at it on like in person it doesn't look like it's so far up on the side but then when I look at it on the camera it looks like it's like super far up. It's so weird. It's tripping me out. All right. So now we have a couple grays. So I'm gonna grab some of this white, grab some of this black, and put in these grays. I'm just going to put in one shade of gray right now and I'll come back and kind of change, like fix it. Because I think it's such a small area, sometimes it's hard to... get that many colors in.
And I think this section for me needs to be bigger. So I'm going to make this come down just a little bit. So here I'm going to go all the way across and then I'm going to angle, angle just slightly. And the one on the left is going to be the slightly darker one. So I'm going to put that one in. I'll probably need to lighten this up because it looks a little bit too dark to me. If I'm going based off of the picture, I would lighten it up. But if you like it a certain shade, you don't have to change it. Okay, so I'm going to go in with a little bit more of this white. When I say white, I mean off-white the white that we created to be the base. I'm going to do like a medium light to dark, like medium in between this one, in between the left side and the pure uh, base color. I'm going to put the base in here real fast and the shape is a little bit um, like not crooked but slanted because it's on the side. I'm going to put in the, the right side now.
make this go to the side a little bit so I can get that clean straight line. All right, so the subtlest of colors make this have its three panels on this side. So, like, the, like those colors are so close together, but that's how it works. Um... All right. Now, if you don't feel confident in putting in the, um, like the windows or anything like that, um, you could leave it like this. Maybe put in the light and you know, the things that you want. You don't like any part of this. Like you don't have to put in. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and put in over here on the side. This little, essentially, it's the other side of the um, um, of the windows and then I'm just going to with some black I'm going to get my my flat brush now granted, I feel like I have a perfect size brush for this, so if you need to get a different size brush or use a different brush, feel free to do that. I'm going to put in the little pieces here of the window. I'm just putting in these little blocks and then I'll come back and like kind of reshape them. And then down here, there's one more. Essentially just putting in these boxes and I will come and kind of reshape them a little bit.
All right, so I'm gonna let those dry. And while I'm letting those dry, uh, let's go ahead and give more contrast to um, this like under part. So I'm gonna do pretty much a black line right underneath the, uh, what do we call it? Patio. Um, it's not a patio, it's called some balcony. And then I'm just going to pull that down a little bit. just gonna do a couple different shades of this gray one is the lightest and then we're gonna go a little bit darker And then a little bit darker than that. I'm just going to blend that down just a little bit so there's a little bit of shadow on there and then I'm going to grab a liner brush and I'm going to get my red We're going to do the red railing. Once I can get my red deck. I just read your comment. It, it is a deck. I feel like balcony or deck would be an appropriate, <laughs> um, appropriate name for it. Good. Uh, let's go ahead. I feel like I could have made my. I could have made my um, windows bigger. Although I still do have a little bit of detail. I'm gonna take my liner brush and grab some black and put it on like the insides of the um, the insides of the windows and that will that will make them look a little bit bigger and when I say inside I actually mean the outside on the white part and so that it'll look like the black is on the inside it'll make everything look bigger.
Okay, um, and then there's a little bit of a black line around where the um, the light is, like inside of it. So I'm just going to start that process of putting in that this light. I'm going to add a layer of white to it just to start the process of making it light. All right, we'll make it yellow in a bit. Um, let's go ahead and make our railing color. I have my red that I'm going to mix a little bit of brown with. to make a little bit of a maroon, maybe a touch of black. Okay, there we go. That's pretty much all I need. I'm going to take my um, one of my liner brushes. I don't know where my other liner brush went. No, there it is. It was hiding. And I'm going to take my liner brush. If you don't have a liner brush, just grab the smallest brush that you have. And I'm going to do the two outside ones first. And they go they don't they go not up to um not quite up to this top like the bottom of the windows it goes below that and not quite out to the end and i'm going to i need to look at this <laughs> i need to look at this um head on so i can see i'm doing it straight and level. And then there's one more, there's two more poles in between the left window and the right window. It's like directly underneath it. Um, have to take a break and finish tomorrow. I forgot I can't sit for long. My back is hurting. Okay. <laughs> no worries. You can always come back and finish it. Have a good night. Alright, I'm going to just finish these. And then grab some more water. Mix it in with that red. And something to note is that the two, the two in the middle are slightly higher than the ones on the end. So the one, the two in the middle, <gasps> Ooh, I just dropped my brush into nothing. Wow, that was great. Um, the, the ones in the middle are gonna go straight across and then they're gonna go slightly down They're gonna go slightly down to the ones on the edges and then slightly down again to go behind.
You can see it like going around. like that. So it goes across and then it goes down a little bit and then down behind. and we are almost done. I'm going to grab my round brush and put in some of the detail for the um, the windows. The first thing I'm going to do is on the left side I'm going to give it a slant that follows the curvature of that panel. And then I'm going to just clean up the sides a little bit. And then with the different colors of my grays, I'm just going to give some slight variation so that I can give, um, it can look like it's like going out. And actually, I'm going to make this one go down a little bit. So I'm just giving a little bit of variation on the top of it with just a little bit of gray and then I'm going to come back with some white and put a little bit of a highlight on the top and it will look like there's like an overhang above it. So nothing too crazy. It comes together a lot easier than you might think.
and then you're going to give a they're going to put a little bit of a triangle next to the window and that's the wall because it's like sitting in it just put a little bit of a triangle and that's pretty much it for that just a little bit of detail makes it look like it's all there Um, let's go ahead and make our yellow. So I'm going to get some um, yellow and a touch of a touch of red and then some white. And I have way too much, so I'm going to grab just a bunch of white and mix what's on my brush into it. I'm going to put some of this yellow around here and then there's like reflections of it around so you can just kind of dry brush that in. We can get a little bit more yellow near the top and bottom and then once that's dry we'll come in with like a clean white for the kind of reflection all right let's do the bottom and then we will pretty much be all done i'm gonna put a little bit of rust here. Okay. Now there's a couple different ways that you can do this. Um, if you have a palette knife, you could use that. If you have a uh, fan brush, you can use a little bit of that. Um, I think I'm going to use a little bit of everything. If you don't have a fan brush, you can use an old brush that's um, uh, that is old and frizzed and if you don't have a palette knife you can just use a normal brush you don't have to use a palette knife for it um, I'm gonna mix up one last color and it's going to be I'm going to use this yellow that I have here and I'm gonna mix in this blue it's gonna turn into a green Need a little bit more blue. Woo, that's a lot of blue. I do not I do not need that much blue. I'll put you back. Um essentially we're just making a very, very dark green. Um that's you could just use black if you wanted to. So essentially you're going to use your your green or sorry your blue your yellow and then you're going to use black and brown to darken it up it'll just be a very very dark green and then the other Thing we're going to do is if you have any of your blue left that's great you're going to use that 
and then some more black and brown. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is use the palette knife to create some of these um, uh, rocks. And if you don't have that, you, that you can use a um, just a normal brush and just kind of dry brush it on there. I'm just going to just put this on for texture. So there's some texture, some base texture, very quick. Uh, here's where you can use a um, a fan brush or a, uh, I use a hog bristle fan brush from Amazon. I have that linked down below. Um, if you're interested in these, I really like them. The one that came in the kit is very, uh, it's nylon and it doesn't really work. So work, it doesn't work how I want them to work. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna grab this green. If you don't have a fan brush, just grab whatever old uh, brush you want. And I'm just going to put in some foliage. I'm going to get some black so that there's a little bit of um, contrast and put it down here at the bottom and maybe some of the other places. Just a little bit of diversity. Maybe there's a little bit of other colors smeared in here. If you're gonna add other colors, make sure to do it kind of in a slant to keep that uh, kind of rock coming over the edge a little bit. Um, and it's at this point that you can put in, go ahead and put in your steps if you haven't put your steps in yet. And I'm just going to take some black. Or if you have that um, color that we used earlier. And... We'll mix with a little bit of black and just use a f use a flat brush. And just use the corner of it to put in your steps. And then either with your flat brush or a liner brush, you can use that for the railing.
and that is pretty much it. I'm going to do one last thing of putting in some darks in some of these areas. Just kind of messing with that. I'm going to fix the white that I went over. And very last step, other than signing it, is we're going to put some white right in the middle of it. And there we go. We're all done. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining me in this class. I'm going to go ahead and sign it, and then um, I will be posting mine on our Facebook community. So if you are not a part of that yet, please go ahead and join that Facebook community if you want more classes. Um, I have a Patreon where you can support me and get tons of other classes, um, as well as quick tips and um, personal feedback and things like that. So um, uh, have fun finishing this. Um, any questions for baby? <laughs> yeah, my baby is, is needing to eat right now. So um, I'm going to go. I hope you guys had a lovely time painting with me. And um, we'll paint with you soon. Have a great rest of your night, guys. Bye.